Hi there. We are here today at the Baha'i International Community with Mr. Hu Sopip, who is the Executive Director of the Cambodian Organization for Research, Development and Education, which is an incredible learning and action program that is based in Badambang in Western Cambodia. Um, we're going to talk a little bit with Sopip about the program, about his work as the director and um, just to hear a little bit more about about his work. He um, Sopip is here with us for the serving on the delegation for the Commission for Social Development. Um, the the theme for which is promoting people's empowerment. So, looking at poverty eradication, at social integration, and at decent work and employment for all. So it's very tied in with um, Sopip's organization, and um, look forward to hearing more. I'm Sopip. I, I was born in Badabong in 1979. And I grew up there. Even right now, I still live in Badabong. And I have, uh, have two children. One is a son and, one is, and the smaller one is the daughter. Uh, Kode has been in Cambodia since 1994. After this, uh, after Cambodian had gone through a very hard time, the civil war, mm -hmm. and and where the educated people, the professors, had, had to leave the country or else would be killed uh, in the country. So after this United Nations Transitional authority in Cambodia came to settle, settle, and Kode was one in, in came to settle in around 1992, and again Kode was one of the first few NGO established in uh, uh, coming to Cambodia to start the social development program. Mm. Since the beginning, Kore was aimed for this mother education. That we thought that the women is the mother will need more education after because we know that after the the war has destroyed all the educated people and and all that. So we thought that the older people will will, will get uh, education so that they can teach their children. But as uh, as we are learning organization. We go, uh, when we do, we learn, we learn by action, we learn by doing, then we reflect that uh, the mother has requested that they prefer to send their children to go for classes, not for them, as they had to go for work, raising, uh, to support the family. Mm -hmm. So then we, the, our program has shifted from mother's education to literacy program for children and youth. So we start up with the children. First, we, we start two classes with 50 children in Badabong. And it has, and slowly, slowly, it has grown to a uh, few hundred children involved in the process. And, and currently, we have around 3,000 children and junior youth, and youth in the program of Kodi. I have seen, uh, I have been involved in Kodi since, since around 2000 and, and I have seen how the process of Kodi, how the, how the effort of Kodi has been doing the work for the community since I am taking part in, in the program in 2000 till now that among the children that have been into the children's class, the literacy program of Kode, now has become the teachers or the uh, or, or take a, a leadership role in the community. That where they uh, where that they can also inspire the mm -hmm. younger ch children to to do to be the, to follow their examples in the community. That's great. So you've seen that progression within the I guess thirteen years that you've been with Kode. Those who were children in the first literacy programs are now contributing and leading back. Yeah, 
um, you know, back to those same groups. Wow, that's wonderful. Um, so can you, um, as a student with Corday, there's, there's the children literacy programs, there are the youth programs, and there's also a university element to it, right? Uh, we, we thought of, like, because of, we look at the community right now, the youths are, the youths are really eager to learn, and they want to get more knowledge, mm-hmm. and they come to city so that they can, the, the city is only the place that where they can learn, they get more knowledge. Are you talking about the city of Badambang or Phnom Penh? Uh, I think in most city. Okay. In all city, the highest higher education is uh, available based in the city. Yeah. So they all have to come from religious. Some have to travel by bicycle for twenty kilometers. Wow. Some have to travel by moto if they are if the parent can afford to get to buy a motorbike for them and all. Some have to come with friends. And those who cannot go back at night, they have to find a place to sleep in the, yeah. like either the temple, the Buddhist temple, or some friends' home or relatives that they can afford to give. Wow. So we look at again when we see this process happening in the community that the youth are coming from the community, moving to town to study, and we see that when they finish. Very few are going back to the, going back to the community to do something for the community for their community for that their they community. grew up in. Yeah. yeah. So mm. many of them, when they finish their school in town, they have to find jobs in town. And they stay. They, they stay in home. town. They don't go back home. Mm. And their life in town is more that they used to the life in town. So it's it, it's difficult for them to go back and adjust their living yeah. in the mm-hmm. community. So when we see this, we, we have this uh, a, a program that we call a preparation for social action. It's aimed to impact to the program start in the community where they don't have to come, and they also can learn what other people in the in the city can learn, and this, and and they they learn in community by doing. So in each. In each of the texts of the curriculum, provide a space for practice, and so one when they learn, they practice, and and through the through the elements of consultation, action, action, cons, uh, action, reflection, consultation, and study, they also empower themselves, and they also inviting other friends or com- uh, community members to take part in the community building. Just like uh, some of the texts talk about environmental issue, so they also gather their friends, though are those who are not in the com- in the program, and the com- some community members don't really want to involve, gather together and they talk about the issues of the related to environment, and after that they come up with certain uh, project like giving the awareness to the community as a whole that burning a plastic is, is also one of the cost to uh, to the environment so they gave this uh, education uh, aw- they gave to the, they, they gave this uh, program to the school in the school and to the people in the community that they should re- recycle the plastic or or else they have they don't use too much on the plastic. I mean, some way they have to reduce or possible, or have to go back to the old traditional way that they have to use the lotus leaf to wrap their things when they buy from market and all that. Or they have to carry their their hand their bags from home, and when they buy, they don't need to drop in the plastic, but they just put in their bag and carry back home. That's what happening in the past, but now because of the plastics and is more convenient and available everywhere, so people get used to this uh, new technology. Yeah. That's wonderful. So, can you give me um, perhaps one example of you know the story of one student who's gone through this program and how perhaps 
the the principles of the core day program have impacted their so like I mean if you can think of a student for example who has gone through the program and you've seen that, that change of mindset that that student has realized that in their adult life they can contribute back to their community and bring further awareness or further social development to that environment with what they've learned in, in their university or in their child literacy program or whatever part of the program they were involved in. Uh, uh, there's some students who have been like involved in the gangster group in the community. Okay. We are even the village chief, the community chief always address this issue that they have a lot of youths are now doing this kind of uh, not involved in this kind of activity with the other youth and causing a lot of problems in the communities. And so when when that when this youth also came to our program and he studied and with of course with the with the accompaniment of the teachers that explain and also accompany him to understand that uh, being part of this you new know, gang gangster or doing a certain kind of you no know, gangster, the way the gangster is, is not really helping the society or community mm. itself. It can also cause a headache to the, the whole village. So he realized that and he started to reflect on himself and then he changed. Well, I think he changed because and then after that he also, and then he became a children class teacher. So he mm. took the children and he, and the way that he used to be and he has now stopped, yeah. And even the commune chief also appreciate and say always says that, you know, be the example of uh, this man that he was he was one of the giving the person who gave the hard day, but now he's becoming the person who are really having to solve the mm-hmm. community problem. It's quite the transformation you see, right? Yeah. It's wonderful. And so then, what do you what do you see? in future years and decades for, for Corday and for other learning and action programs similar? Uh, we, are, we are still moving in the way we learn. At the same time, we do and we reflect and we learn. So we are not really uh, things that the, the big aim that what is going to be, what, how, is, how Corday is going to apply. But at the moment that we are, we are doing is we have two lines of actions. That one is the community school program, the other one is the preparation for social action program. This, the preparation for social action program is building the capacity of youth to take uh, to realize their potential and trying you know, trying to involve themselves in the community development. They also they also can become something in the community. Uh, the aim is that they, they would be become the promoter of community well being. Oh, yes. yeah. So community school the, the community school the, the teacher is also have to learn this uh, how how to be a promoter of community well being. And the committee has the committee is the one who who, who run the program. Right? I mean, the program is is belong the, the program belongs to the community. Corey only play a role of uh, providing training, technical support to the teachers to the community where the where we have the community school and support of the teachers. The community has to responsible places chairs. Either parents of children or the com- community had to take responsible. So right now we have right now we have eight community school. Uh, this 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 is new program that we have just started last year. So we are still in learning to operate it, and we are still in learning to identify which communities are ready and which community are not ready for for the program. Mm. Well, it's very exciting. I thank you so much for sharing this wonderful initiative.